Part B of this problem wants us to find points of inflection for the function. And back in part A, we already had y prime as being uh, 3x squared minus x minus 2. I'll write the original function here just to have it on hand. And the interval was negative 1 to 2. Okay, now POIs occur when concavity changes, and concavity is indicated by the second derivative. <clears throat> so where the second derivative changes sign, y will have potentially a point of inflection. So we do need the equation for the second derivative. It's a pretty easy one to come up with. The way we tell what the concavity is We can tell the second derivative will equal 0 when x is 1 sixth. So over here I'm going to mark 1 sixth on a number line. I'm going to use the second derivative to see what the concavity of y is to the left of that and what it is to the right of that. Because the sine of y double prime will also tell me about the concavity of y. If I plug in a number like, for instance, 0 would be a good test number to use on the left side, and 1 might be a good test number to use on the right side, because 1 sixth is in between those somewhere. y double prime of 0 would give me 0 minus 1, that's a negative, and y double prime of 1 would give me 6 minus 1, that's a positive. Because y double prime now, we can tell, changes signs when x is a sixth, um, that would give us the x-coordinate of a point of inflection for y. To get the y coordinate, we plug 1 sixth back into the original. Pair. The ordered pair would be 1 sixth for x, 14 27 for y, and that would be a point of inflection the one and only point of inflection for the graph of y. The calculus sentence you'd want to use would be, because when x is 1 sixth, y double prime changes sign.